Transmission Inland Wetlands Agency. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, there we go. All right. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Town of Fairfield Conservation Commission Inland Wetlands Agency uh, meeting for February 1st, 2023 at 7 p.m. 7.04, it looks like. Um, and I'll uh, take roll my, myself, Luke Thomas, um, Brian Han, Rick Boucher, Jerry Alessi, Dave Fain, um, Kato Mahoney is online, Peter Hood is here, as well as Ted Lutzinger. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five. So I will appoint uh, Ted and Kate um, as alternates for tonight's meeting. Uh, Kate, did you hear that? You're Oh, 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 there she is. I did. I heard. Okay, great. Is that I mean, Amanda? Is that Amanda? Can we? So I, I on the screen I see a name Amanda. Doesn't have a last name. Amanda, is that? It is not. It is not. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, okay, well, we have quorum and we have the two alternates uh, appointed. So now we'll go to Roman three, uh, the approval of the draft meeting minutes in the wetlands agency meeting from January 4th, 2023. Okay, um, barring no, no comments or questions, it, there's a motion at, from Second. Jay, seconded by Rick. Uh, all in favor to approve the minutes? Uh, number one. Yep. And then number two is the site walk meeting, January 8th, 2023. Uh, any questions, nope. comments? No, Rick is motioning yep. to um, approve. Any seconds there? Second. Uh, Ted's uh, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, four. This is uh, Roman four application for discussion. Uh, number one, WP-22-293, Zhao, 137 Woods and Road, Map 145, Parcel 70, Corrective Action Replants Stream Bank with Native Plantings um, Activity Within a Regulated Area. Um, it, the application type, um, I don't, I'm not sure it doesn't say if it's significant or not significant. Public hearing petition has not been received as of December 28th, 2022. And the petition period ends January 15, 2023. Uh, the last day for a public hearing for decision is March 10th, 2023. On the last regular meeting prior is March 1st, 2023. The staff recommends tabling pending payment of application fees and departmental review. I do recall that the uh, applicant uh, asked for waiver. We waive some fees. So I'm right. assuming she had issues with the remaining fees, but um, Tim, can you follow up with her, I guess, on that? Yeah, her and I uh, emailed uh, this afternoon. Um, she does um, have a problem, like you said, with the uh, remaining fees of 960 down from a little over 5,000. Uh, I explained that the uh, commission voted at the last meeting um, to, uh, to uphold the, the recommended um, Fee price. And, um, that's <laughs> that's where it stands. That's where right? it stands. All right. Well, um, do we need a vote to table it, or can we just not act on it? I think you need a motion to table. You need a motion, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anybody willing to do a motion to table this? I'll make a motion. We uh, right, staff right. recommendations table it. Anybody second? second. Jerry. Yep. Okay. Um. Roman five bills and bond releases. Number one, IWP 2017-18-05, Fairfield University, 1070 North Benson Road, fill wetlands and construct new business school within a regulated area. Request of Walter Stapleton for final release of $11,800. Partial bond release of $34,600 was completed in September of 2021. Staff recommends final bond release of $11,800. Uh, Tim, is, is it all done? Is that why you're recommending everything? 
I'll defer to uh, Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Okay. Um, this past fall was the last of their invasive species spraying that they needed to do. Everything's been planted and has survived. And they're continuing maintenance on it. So everything, all of the conditions have been met. Excellent. Okay. okay. Anybody want to vote on that? The motion to approve the bond release. All right. Thank you. Uh, Jay's motion. Second. Rick seconds. All in favor to the final bond release. Right. Yep. Okay. We're good. Number two, IWP 2013-14-13, Fairfield University, 1070 North Benton Road. Construct School of Nursing addition within a regulated area. Request of Walter State for final release of 3,000. Partial bond release of 44,000 was completed January 2018. An additional partial bond release of 2,800 was completed in July 2022. Same thing here, Sarah. Same thing. The first release was for the majority of the work. The second was for plant survivability. And this final little bit was held for invasive species control, which they finished their five year plan. All right. Um, you know what? Let's do it together. And then also, number three, IWP 2020 21 17, Fairfield University, 1073 North Benson Road, construct new residential townhouses in the vicinity, vicinity of Lynch Road within a regulated area. Request of Walter Stapleton for final bond relief of seven thousand six hundred. Um, same issue, same there. Yeah, that one didn't really have any big conditions. No, nope. that was that they did that one really fast. Did, um, did. Okay, I, remember, I think that was a couple of years ago. All right. Um, so a motion for both of those bond release. So, let it go, Rick. Okay, Rick seconds, and it was Jay's original motion. Okay, okay good. Thank you. Um. Six Roman six legal enforcement actions. Number one, continued show cause hearing Janine Norwood 120 Wakeman Lane, Southport. Um, uh, two, four, six, parcel five, C clearing wetland vegetation and addition material within a wetland. Um, this is the one that we referred to the town attorney, right? Um, so Tim, is there an update, I guess, on that? Update is uh, that's correct. A memo went to uh, attorney Baldwin on this one uh, last week. I did receive a list uh, and of of uh, species and quantity being proposed of um, uh, vegetation. Uh, I did um, look it over, uh, though there was no map providing the locations of the plants. Uh, there were three species that flagged um, recommended. Uh, replacement with natives um, as they were non native species. I uh, responded uh, this week back to uh, Miss Norwood um, and she stated that uh, I sh can expect something um, next week. So, all right, well, just keep in touch with the town attorney. Um, just want to make a point that, um, excuse me, um, you know, we're not just looking for a plant list. We don't, we were looking for documentation of. What's there? What the nature of the violation? How extensive it was, and and also the conservation areas that were disturbed, and then how they would restore them. I think we all have to be part and parcel of the same information we request. So uh, to follow yeah, on that, that's what I've been thinking. Is there is there a reason it should be reinspected? We I just, we don't know what's uh, going on. It was just a preliminary. They want to throw it throw it our way to see if it stuck. It's Given the history, there was activity after the NOV the first time. So I, I would I would think that at this point we referred it to the town attorney. Okay. So he will know what the parameters are, what we need to do. Um, you know, he as our attorney, he has our marching orders. But that, again, as an attorney, he may seek to tell them what's needed to be done prior to any lawsuit initiating. And if that doesn't happen, then he's going to initiate a lawsuit. Right. Okay. So. I wanted to just interject that while, you know, I appreciate them asking staff for guidance that ultimately the decision is going to rest with this agency. And they're going to have to deal with us. So. Tim, you've already uh, handed this off to Baldwin. Attorney. Yeah, that's yep. correct. Right. Well, I, I wasn't going to ignore. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. ignore their request for me to look at it. How, how long has he had it? It needs to be done, but um, I would say at least a few weeks. A few weeks. Okay. I did get an email back from him today uh, to uh, with a request to discuss tomorrow regarding yeah. this. Yes, right. Okay, great. Excellent. All right.
right. Uh, number two under Romans um, six, a Cynthia O'Malley, 47 Bridge Lane, map 12, parcel 318. Rating landscaping of a map, wetland area, and regulated area without a permit. And Tim, news there. Uh, the order did go out. Um, as requested, uh, I have not had any contact with the applicant. Okay. Or the property owner, I should say. Right. Is this one that we should place on the land records also? I would support that if you want to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we put the notice of violation on the land records until it's resolved. And you have a second. This is over a year old. Oh. Oh. Second ahead of over here. We have a second. 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 I yield second. to yours. Yeah. Jay, okay. place on land records, seconded by uh, uh, Pete. Um, any discussion? Yeah. Uh, Tim, has, um, have you reached out to Alex, Alexandra at all, or is she just submitted that, that report, the wetland delineation? After that, uh, she received the order, and then uh, in her email, she was going uh, to Europe to deal with her sick mother. Okay, so I think she's out of the country. I'm not sure when she returns. We were told that last month when we had that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it does have the deadline in there, and you know, what's the deadline in there? Uh, it was 90 days. Um, I think that put it in. I want to say April. All right. Well, I mean, my concern is that the notice of violation went out with a deadline for 90 days. I, I, I just, maybe it might be premature because we were giving them two different directions. Um, the, our director has sent them a letter saying, do something within the next 90 days. If they don't do anything within those 90, 90 days, I think then it might be an appropriate thing to go. Yeah, I agree. Um, so that's my two cents, but it's still discussion time before we vote on the motion. Okay, with that. A motion, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. unless you withdraw, 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 withdraw the motion. motion. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Where are we? Thank you. Roman seven staff reports reports from the conservation department. A CWC permit applications received four. The notice of violations issued zero. Oh, and then C. Bonds release seven. Um, and then number two, Conservation Department office relocation to uh, Sullivan Independent Hall, first floor. Tim? You're moving down. Yeah, right, instead of Bob Alpha. It's Fridays ago we moved to the first floor, so I just wanted everyone to know. Okay. Uh, if you come visit us, don't go up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great space. Uh, everyone's welcome. Stop by and say hello, including, including the public. We're uh, adjacent to engineering. Did you, were you able First to floor. snag those cabinets? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. All right, now, Roman 8, public hearings, number 1, WP-22-322, Women Kenny Associates LLC, 2717 North Street, Map 165, Parcel 29. Replace existing residential driveway crossing within a regulated area. Decision may be made if the public if the hearing is completed, or the hearing may be continued. The original 35-day public hearing timeframe to complete the hearing ends on March 8th, 2022. 65-day time extension may be provided by the applicant. So a further public hearing continuation to May 12, 2023 is possible. A potential continuation date is March 1st, 2023. If the hearing is completed, the decision shall be made within 35 days of the close of the public hearing. The staff recommends approval with conditions. There's also a fee waiver request. Maybe uh, I think we should start with the fee waiver request before we get into, yeah. into this. Um, any comments, discussions about the fee waiver? I think it's uh, warranted. Um, I think it's the, the, the fee as, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a good project. Then the applicant should be commended for doing this and not punished for doing it. Feel that the fee as calculated is a punishment. 
and a deterrent for people to actually get um, apply for app for permits. And I don't think that's a position we want to be put people in. I I think that the uh, the proposal that the applicant has made is reasonable, and I would endorse it. Any other comments on the fee? How much is the app fee application? Without any fee, it's like twelve thousand dollars. It was twelve thousand dollars, but then there's also the permit fee and site disturbance fee after, so it ends up being close to twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, is it? At Lehman's terms, in some ways, you're kind of are you posturing that it's kind of an encouragement for someone to not seek a permit. Well, I, when think, I, I think when you have 25 and when your fees exceed sometimes the cost of doing the the work, and certainly, um, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's I think it's encouragement to do the, the Is this work. So what we're looking at these are these fees that you guys are yeah. on the committee, the subcommittee on. Yes. Okay. I'm a, like I'm gonna do work without seeking yeah. a permit. Right. Oh, I you know, and I think he, there's a fundamental order of fairness, and I, I just don't think it's fair to to to, to, to really hit somebody with that. And then th this person is actually doing a really good thing, spending a lot of money to do a good job. Uh, you know, they don't have to; they could do something much less expensive, but they're doing the right thing. And, and I feel like we're punishing them. Okay. Grateful for your input. Okay. Learning a lot here. I, I went on the site walk, and I agree with that. I mean, what they're what they're planning on doing is a substantial improvement over what's there right now, and they should be commended for that. Yeah, especially with uh, the cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comments. Um, yes. I just had one quick question. Have we ever done this before where we have retroactively, um, cause I know they've already paid the fee. Like, is it hard for the off to, for the staff to then get this money back to them? No, I, I, yeah. We've done it before. That, that's been done before, Kate. Perfect. I, I agree with Jay's assessment. I think it's a wonderful project. Excellent. Um, I, I have a quick question only with even though these new suggested fees that you guys are looking into, would the fee waiver amount, if we were to approve it, would it be similar to what those fees would be, or is it still higher? I, we're looking at, I think, trying to get rid of the whole formulistic oh, okay. thing with all the square footage of this and square footage, and, you know, yeah. and, and, and uh, have the fees. We looked at a lot of other towns, most of it's per activity. Sometimes there's, you know, exist more fees for. Work within the wetlands, but I think here it's just work for square foot of property. Which you know, if you want a big property, why should be planning for it? Well, anybody want to put a motion up to uh, accept or uh, uh, the way the fee waiver? I'll make the motion that we uh, uh, accept and approve the fee waiver as a second proposed by the applicant. Second, I second. All in favor? Aye. Kate, uh, aye. Uh, all around. Good. All right, so now we go to the uh, public hearing. I'll have a motion to open the public hearing. Anyone? No, I'm okay. to open the public hearing. Yeah. Hey, do you want to second that? Hey, there, second. You go. there you go. We get everybody involved there. <laughs> All right, and who's here? No, yeah. Good evening. Bill Kenny, the principal of William Kenny Associates in Fairfield. I'm a professional who went to sign up soil science. Nice to meet you. Uh, we worked with uh, two other consultants on this project. Uh, hoping you want to put this in once we can get into the screen shot. Sure. Get your um, map on. Also with me this evening is Dick Coco, the structural engineer, and then Dr. Andy, do you want to give me this? Get it all somehow. Huntington Company was responsible for uh, surveying and civil engineering. Are you blaming them? Oh, nice yeah. catch. Yeah. There you go. Although I have a. They're trying to screen share it. Is this is this okay? Well, we're gonna find out. This is we're only like our third day here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Second time. Yeah. Probably better off. Yeah. 
have one. That's right. We can just look at the screens. Thank you for the feedback. Appreciate that. Uh, We're trying to go down that road, you know, as you heard. So it's a, it was glad. So it's a good opportunity to discuss it. Thank you. This is a project that has a. It's a already developed residential property with a home, a driveway, septic system, things like that. It's in the northwestern portion of town, um, between Reading and Congress Street, or south of it. North Street, it's a rear lot, so it has a pretty long driveway access way getting to the rear portion of the lot. And there is a small brook that flows uh, that where the driveway crosses a small lot. And there's existing uh, pipes at that at that crossing to plastic culverts, so the corrugated plastic culverts, about 18 inches in size. One is collapsing. And so uh, the proposal is to remove those pipes and build a small bridge. Uh, so we'd be restoring or recreating the, the brook channel that was eliminated when the pipes were put in back when the house was put on. The drawings, the project design is shown on two two drawings by the Huntington Company and one by Kuoko uh, Structural Engineers. And uh, I have information if you like to have any questions. Uh, I have one question before we get going. I some of the documents that I read said that a portion of the driveway is either in an easement or a portion of the bridge will be on the, the abutting owner's property. Is that can you clarify that? I'm uh, the initial hundred feet or so of the driveway is shared with the neighbor is right up on on North Street. So that neighbor, this property is 2717 North Street and yeah. the neighbor in front of them is 2711. So they share the driveway before the river. Before, okay. So will there be any work or any damage, anything done in that area? No, where it's just construction access. Just construction access. Okay. So there was no requirement, there's no need to get approval from that neighbor for anything that's being done on their property or anything like that. Right? I don't believe so. Okay, that, thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Commissioner. Yeah, I have. Um, so the, I actually, you know, as I said, I'm in favor of this project. I think it's a, a, a good project and um, there's, there are other alternatives that could have been done. This is probably the most expensive, but it's the most environmentally sensitive. Um, alternative, and they're going to restore the stream channel, which is ideally what you want to see in every wetland crossing when you do that, have the same substrate. But there's two comments from the engineering department. One, which is not um, overly problematic um, regarding asking for a construction phasing plan, but the first comment uh, as asking for a hydrology report stating that there will be not an upstream or downstream impact as a result of this project. Um, my conundrum is I'm in favor of this project, but if we approve it tonight about that report, we're not going to be able to make the finding that there's no impacts because we don't have that report as requested by the town engineer. Can you add any insight to that, Bill? And that, you know, it's a risk for the agent and it's a risk for the applicant to approve it without that information. What you're saying. So essentially, right now, with the two pipes, they're cross sectional area, the size that allows us to flow of water, the opening for the flow of water is smaller than what's going to be there with the bridge. So there is a certainly on a much larger stream, you do it, something like that, and all of a sudden you could have a big flood flow coming down and affecting a downstream property or where the crossing today functions as a, an advantage. I suspect due to the size of this brook that it will not be a, a major issue, um, but I can appreciate if uh, the desire to wait and see what the hydraulic analysis shows. I, I think that we should do that because it's a cleaner way of doing it. It's a better decision. It's, you know, and I, I appreciate you know, wanting to get the approval, but I think we should defer um, to the next meeting. The applicant is 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 willing to do the report as a condition. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So we any um, table. any other questions, comments, concerns from any other commissioner? I am grateful for that. Okay. Um, right. If that's the case, then I'll uh, I'll keep the public hearing aspect of this uh, application open. 
uh, we will wait for the report to come in. Um, I think we're, we're well within the time frame, so we'll have it on for the March meeting. Hopefully by then we can get the report in, review it, and we discuss it, close the public hearing and see what happens then. Okay. That's very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, all right, now we're public hearings uh, number two continued WP-22-258 Sheriff of Housing Corporation 980 High Street, map 77, parcel 340. Construction of a 40 unit assisted multifamily affordable housing development within a regulated area. Decision may be made if the hearing is completed or the hearing may be continued. The original 35 day public hearing time frame to complete the hearing ended on December 7, 2022. Of the allowed 65 day time extension, a 28 day time extension was granted to continue the hearing until January 4th, 2023. A further 37 day time extension was granted until February 10th, 2023, to allow the public hearing to be continued to February 1st, 2023. If necessary, the public hearing may be continued to a special in and wetlands agency meeting before February 10th, 2023. If the hearing is completed, if a decision shall be made within 35 days of the close of the hearing. Staff recommends review and further discussion of newly submitted documents and plans. Was Tim, was this agenda prepared before we got the documents and plans that we got on the last couple of days? Is that what this is? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that went out. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we're still in the public hearing phase. Council. Hey, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Again, for the record, Brian with the coaches represent the applicant group. We have our team present again this evening, and I will be brief this evening in concluding. We have Brian Baker, uh, to my right, your left, who is the licensed professional engineer, and Bill Penny, to his right, uh, both up to the architect and soil scientist. Record, I just note, if you receive the statement from the Health Engineering Department dated January 24th, noting the plans that we've uh, submitted as revised work consistent with the 10 year, two year stormwater detection guidelines, as well as the plan. Further notes, uh, engineering agreed with the comments, Mr. Baker. Two notes with the suggestion of engineering. There was one suggestion that the pre construction test pits be missed by the engine. Mr. Baker indicated at the last hearing early January that he expected to meet with York Mr. Ginter to discuss Mr. Ginter's. A uh, few final comments, and he did that. We we'll also have on the record correspondence from Mr. Ginter dated January 30th of this year, um, and he sent a cover letter along with this January 3rd letter, noting that he's been in communication with Mr. Baker, and uh, his comments are quote very minor and quote will have no impact on an approval at this time. Uh, I just want to thank this commission for the opportunity to part for our team to work professionally with Mr. Ginter, your consultant. In this review process, it was very helpful and very beneficial, I think, to this process. Uh, and his, in his January 30th correspondence, Mr. Ginter made uh, these several final comments. Uh, he notes that his comments are mostly construction related. Thank you. Pressing them now, time of construction. And as to his final comments made in that letter of January 30, we agree that they can be made conditions of approval should you choose as well. And, uh, I do have uh, our team here again, and I'm going to call Mr. Baker briefly for uh, some final comments. Not to repeat what you said already. If you had any comments, uh, some, uh, any documents from the you know, since the uh, last hearing, such as drainage, et cetera. So Mr. Baker. Uh, thank you. Yes, for the record, Brian Baker, a licensed engineer in the state of Connecticut with Civil One. Um, just to go over the 
revisions uh, to got some revised sheets there rather than printing the full sets, but it explained the line applications that just should have been in the record. Um, the right here at the toe of the slope of the detention basin, where it's from the stand of the ramp pad and the passage of the zone. That's the only thing that she was looking at the same time. And then on the detail sheets for the clean out for the stormwater pipes, we have T shown on there. The recommendation was to change the TY uh, for easier access, which we did. Let's see on the screen there. Yeah, right. You can see the second detail in, second one down. You can see that's TY now where it was a T. And then on the last page of the plans, That in the response letter, we concurred, you know, indicated that we would install the sanitary sewer line in conformance with the WPCA requirements. And Mr. Ginter asked that that be reflected on the plans. And he also wanted it reflected on the plans that the um, ENS, ENS inspections take place bi weekly uh, and within 24 hours of the point of storm event, which we agreed to. On this pan, I had indicated those reports be submitted to the town land use office upon the request. And in the, Mr. Ginter's final of his three comments, he recommended that they all go to the, to the town staff automatically. I know in some towns they want you to submit them all the time or at their request. Well, obviously, we have to distribute them electronically after do or whoever does the ENS inspection, whatever the professional does. Send an email, a copy of that report to uh, Tim right after it's done. So we have no issue with that. Um, the only one other thing I don't want to belabor what I said at the last meeting per se, uh, but you did get another second review memo from Mr. Trankis. He reiterated his positions before, which I feel are unsubstantiated, doesn't have any calculations in that memo. He just pulls things, pulls things out of the uh, e-manual and says, uh, I'll meet them and it's going to be wetlands and there's going to be extreme volumes, no calculations provided. What it boils down to in his, his memo, he has issues with uh, uh, volumes of post-development stormwater. He provided calculations. To Mr. Ginter, and they're in the report that uh, we're decreasing the volume of the one year storm, which is the most important. Um, other storms, yes, the volume does increase. That's the case with every site that you have detention and not full infiltration of every storm on it. So, what DED says in their guidelines okay, if you're going to increase the volume, let's meet the groundwater recharge criterion and the stormwater or storm channel protection criterion. Both of which we meet. So we take care of the issue um, of volume. Um, with regards to infiltration rates, again, don't want me to repeat myself, but he indicated there, you know, his whole review is based on that water won't infiltrate, the water won't infiltrate. And then he pulls out the section of the manual that says um, minimum field measured rates of 0.3 inches per hour is recommended as a practical lower limit. He leaves it at that. We were slightly lower than that. But the next sentence in the manual says lower infiltration rates may be acceptable provided that the water quality volume and drain time criteria are met. Drain time, they'd like it, the, it to drain between 12 and 48 hours. Um, our system is drained uh, in 36 hours, and those calcs are in there. So we meet the criteria for infiltration and drainage. And lastly, treatment is that there's somehow the stormwater is not going to be treated. The reason there isn't water quality volume criteria in the manual is to show that it hold that infiltrate that takes care of your your total suspended solids and your other measures um, your other pollutants uh, get renovated we meet all that and that's before put that aside we meet the entire water quality mine criteria that doesn't take credit for the um, permeable pavement and the sand filter of the in the permeable pavement again as I mentioned last time removes 99% of TSS, 99% of hydrocarbons, 75% of the thing. 
incentive of phosphorus. And do we the criteria meet the intent of the guidelines? And I think that the fact that you've had a third party review has no horse in the race. We came in as an independent and he agrees with us. You have your town and engineering department who would not say that we're consistent with the group criteria if we were not. Um, you have three different engineering entities that have said this is the real work. And the one that does not as well as hired by the opposition and has not provided any concrete evidence as such. Thank you, Mr. Baker. I have a question. Um, so since we got really deep into the weeds on this stormwater stuff, and probably more than I wanted to, but can you tie this all back into what the point of this agency sitting here is? Will there be an impact to wetlands and water courses from the proposed stormwater system? I'm going one step behind that. Would we be able to get a statement from Mr. Ginter as to his opinion on the effect of the wetlands and water courses? I did not see that in his last letter. What's that? I know he's also here. If, if he's online, that would be fine. I could, um, from my standpoint, as a professional engineer with 28 years experience in the business, a certified professional in stormwater quality and a certified professional in horse and sediment control, our design will not have a negative impact on the downgrading of wetlands or the upland river. So, Alt, that's going to be used to, we were talking about Kate mentioned the permeable pavement, uh, especially for the fire engine turnaround. So since it's not going to be uh, sanded, there's going to be salt. I mean, there's various types of salt, but they each have their own drawbacks, meaning. Yeah, we will have to will affect not only the perimeter plants and animals, but. That's the case with any parking lot that you will pull down that has pervious pavement, it will be treated with salt it can't be treated with, with sand because that would clog up uh the right but i guess my point is that the salt have you accom accommodated for the salt entering the wetlands which it will do correct correct but the salt will it will flow through the soil and then also be um hit the groundwater and be diluted through the groundwater prior to, to hitting that uh, wetlands area and the fact is with the, the fact that we have the Fairfield Housing Corporation as the entity that's going to run this, they can monitor and minimize the amount of salt that needs to be used. Also, we have a very flat parking area um, where you know our cross pitch is two and a half percent. So you're you're not gonna have a lot, even you know, not gonna need a lot of salt on uh, that. Um, and then typically pervious pavement, because it's connected air force to the subsurface below it that does not have as much snow generally so you will be leveling the pitch that because when in layman's terms when i stand in the field that is let's say above in terms of at a higher elevation layman's terms my interpretation is the water will drain into the wetlands eventually uh you're going to come in and build a project and that's going to be replaced with pavement and roofs so I see that as a big velocity increase, but your plan is to treat the water before it ends up in the wetlands. Correct, and it's going to infiltrate into the ground. In the wetlands? No, into the ground below the parking area. All right, we're talking layman's terms because I there's people outside listening. Sure. So the storm drainage system is designed for visitors to enter either the stone reservoir underneath the parking or retain it. And the parking itself is drained towards the permeable pavement, which filters through a sand filter and into that stone reservoir under the pavement and then into the groundwater. So your, your water that has pollutants, your first flush, uh, is infiltrated through the sand filter and then through the native soil. And then ultimately, it will eventually be hit, hit the wetlands after it flows underground and comes out through the groundwater table. Um, your surface water in your larger storms that, that would not infiltrate. So when you get into the two year through 100 year storm, there you're worried more about flows than pollutants. Uh, and in there, we decrease the flows to the wetlands in all design storms. And what happens there is anything that 
after it is retained in the underground detention under the parking area, we have that additional above ground wet bottom basin uh, in the field adjacent to the wetlands to provide additional additional renovation, additional detention, and it will also provide ventilation, uh, even though by then the, the smaller storms that carry the pollutants are going to be renovated in the parking area. But certainly there's still additional stormwater renovation in the wet bottom basin and the planted basin adjacent to the wetlands. If I might add on the soil, remember your traditional parking lots where you have cooling of water, you have a freeze thaw that causes the gas. That's just even permeable because when you have that thaw, the water will go through it. So you don't have those ice that you may have on initial where you have um, water will thaw and then you just sit there and have nowhere to go and uh, fluff up the area. So that's, that's one advantage. It would be less soft. There'd be some, but not a significant amount given permeability as the water melts it goes through the to sit on top. Yes, I have a question, <clears throat> Mr. Baker. Is there are there challenges like because inevitably one of these is going to fail, right? I mean, with the specific to the whatever storm trap or whatever they're called, <clears throat> like if this was over in some sort of like, you know, virgin ground or some grass area, it seems to me like it's sort of academic how you would troubleshoot that and sort of fix it, replace it, add another system. Like I could sort of make sense of that. But as a non-engineer, like, you know, having these things entrapped underneath pavement, is there is there a, a system or a way that you can troubleshoot and, and or replace? Or is that just a huge... There, you can maintain and there are access reports to maintain should you need to get in there and vacuum out any sediment and you won't get sediment in there typically because it's going to be we're not going to be sanding any sediment that ends up on top of the pervious pavement part of the maintenance that has to be vacuumed out we do have catch basins with some and hooded outlets which need to be maintained back out Catch bases are then tied into the storm trap unit, which need to be inspected. And if sediment builds up in there, which I don't see, Thank you. you would have to get through the porous purpose pavement and through the stone to get in there. It will. <laughs> but and then the only other spot that you know we want to have access to for maintenance is for the outlet structures. So from the storm trap units, they go into a drainage manhole. It has a concrete weir with a three inch or four inch low flow orifice and a seven inch upper flow orifice. So those need to be again, pulled just like any catch basin. You pull the cover, vacuum it out, make sure it's not. You know, and can you look back like from some of those catch basins or the. Yeah, like can you can they. Yeah, they would, yeah, they would use a jet back, basically a machine that goes down and vacuums and sprays water as it goes. That's what they typically do clean out pipes. And then just a big vacuum trucks for um, sucking out the catch basins. But we don't have the advantage here. Don't have a large area. It's not steep. So we don't and we're not going to put some sand. So you're not gonna, there's not going to be a heavy sediment load. And sometimes you have developments where you've got, you know, 10, 15 acres of, of upland area that may if it's let's say farm field produces can produce a significant amount of sediment. You've got sediment loads coming on here. The only sediment that's and could potentially enter our system is what's generated by our site because we have a stone wall and there's no drainage from up above that comes onto our site until you go down to the eastern end and through the, the stone wall and into the wetlands. So it's just uh, based on the, the use size of the site, there's just not a significant set of a low But there is a significant stormwater maintenance plan that has to happen every year or some things twice a year. Mm. And again, those reports will have to be submitted to Tim to keep it maintained. And, and it says right in the last sentence of the story, part is that all aspects of this design must be maintained in accordance with the approved design plans. So I mean, these are concrete units that are capable of handling you know, fire truck loading right on top of them. But you know, some there was a faulty one and it collapsed for some reason. Again, 
because it has to be maintained in accordance with the system, it would have to be replaced. And you could do that. You could cut into the forest the pavement case. just the same way you can with like regular. Okay. So I, I, I have a question. Judging from the the uh, plan, you know, approximately seventy five percent of this parcel is going to be covered. And you've taken great steps to redirect the water. You've mentioned that there'll be inspections and cleanouts. What organization is responsible? I know it's not yours, but what organization is responsible for the maintenance and clean out of that? Uh, the Fairfield Housing, the owner of the property. So Fairfield Housing. The owner of the property is. Okay. The owner of the property is responsible. Yeah. What happens if the leaders get clogged or the uh, the pipes collapse underneath the uh, parking lot? They just collapse underneath the parking lot. Again, it would have to be. Let's see how the system has to be maintained in accordance to show plan. So if a pipe collapses, honestly, if because of the porous pavement, if for some reason and see why it would, but if one of the storm pipes collapse, you probably wouldn't even know it because the water is going to be entering in through the porous pavement and into the system. But the systems do have to be inspected. So, but I mean, these pipes and catch basins and everything that that's built are designed for uh, for traffic loading. So there's no, you know, no anticipated. You, you don't have. You just typically don't have pipes collapsing unless you put along. You know, you put in a, a, a you know, you know, one of those. Uh, I don't know what type pipe it is, but you know, the flexible yard drain plastic. The PVC. It's a high density polyethylene. Yeah, because yeah, I actually had that in my backyard running out, and I actually had a pipe collapse, and we had to trench the whole backyard. I know to change the pipe, and half the time sediment gets in there from coming down from the gutters and gets stuck in the leaders, and pipe actually collapsed, and I had to dig up my whole backyard to do it. So, and that house was built in '86, so it wasn't that long that we had to trench the whole backyard to do it. So I'm looking at this is pretty much the same concept here. And we use the same products. That's why I have a question about that. So how did you know? How did you know that it had collapsed? I mean, this is when But instead in my backyard, it was soaking wet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you have a pipe collapse. So we had Roto Ruta come in, track and said, Yeah, pipe collapsed. And I interpreted what Rick was asking was absent some sort of external you know, uh element. Why I mean, is there gonna be some sort of sustained maintenance schedule? For, for you know forever. I mean, that's the kind of thing that the yeah. public is concerned yes, about. Well, well, let me have the record. In the record, you have in record that the maintenance plan or that includes inspections and maintenance and the obligation. It's standard in your approvals and the obligation to should something collapse for whatever reason to fix it. That would be done. That is required. And, and what's the shape of the fire engine turnaround? I'm not clear on. Is that a a Y or is it a or, uh, you know, the hammerhead. I'm not clear on how the. I, I typically think of fire engines as making a circle. Yes, yeah, so this, no, this was reviewed with the fire. Department. That was my question. And they can't. Yeah, we showed them. And the fire marshal has signed off on the. The fire chief who actually yeah. signed off. So, and they reviewed. They told us what truck, the biggest truck. That was my. I wanted out. that out there. Not not the one that may respond, but the biggest mm -hmm. one. Very right. Own. Worst case scenario. Right. The largest. Aerial truck in town. Yes, yeah, we provide the attorney when we basically comes down the lane, pulls in here, and chases. I got that. I just typically people think of a turnaround as the requirement for a full circle, and I just wanted to hammerhead that term. Right. So I, I have a question. I've, I've been trying to get my head around this since I'm new to this commission over the course of the last two to three meetings, um, and this is a bit rhetorical. Um, it seems that the primary um, thrust of the uh, Trinkus memo is that infiltration will not work at this site. Are right? you dealing with poorly drained soil, very poorly drained soil, the definition of a wetland, all right? And you're relying on infiltration as part of the stormwater management system. Assuming he's right, how would you change the design to deal with excess water without infiltration as one of your strategies. Well, I can't assume he's right because he's wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> the fact that we did the tests in the field for the permanent toilet rates, and based on those rates, we have enough infiltration rate to meet the draining time 
Now the, the, the infiltration takes care of the stormwater treatment. Watch for our flows. For flow, all right. Now for flows, we took no credit for infiltration. It's, the flows will still all be decreased in the same amount. Okay. It's such a minimal amount. The infiltration's there for that initial stormwater treatment of the water quality volume. As I mentioned, even if you took out the water quality volume, mm. the uh, sand filter and the impervious pavement provides excellent renovation for the stormwater. So you still have excellent renovation without the stormwater, without the water quality volume. But whether you run the numbers with or without the infiltration, because when you're running the stormwater models, you're looking at, you know, in a hundred year storm, mm. 8.4 inches of rain, which is able to turn data from down. You know, if you're infiltrating a quarter inch per hour, right. So, about, so the flows themselves, storm post development storm flows will still be decreased by the same amount, whether we have uh, infiltration is there for So it's not dependent on infiltration as far as dealing with the volume or the flow. Okay. Something else to keep in mind um, is that the thing that was going forces it uses the rings, steel rings that forces the water just vertically, mm -hmm. measuring just the vertical. But in reality, as it does today, that way it left one spot, not everywhere. Right. The water will move laterally. It, it moves down until it gets a layer or maybe the amount of water is exceeding the capacity of that underlying layer. So I, I, the upper layers usually are, have a better, higher capacity to allow that water to move through it. And it's the underlying layer where the capacity is reduced. So if it hits that and if the storm velocity is great, flow is high enough that it exceeds that capacity of the underlying layer, it moves sideways. And that's what it does in storms today. And that's why as it comes down the slope, it breaks out at some point, and that's why you get a wetland forming on the mm -hmm. lower side of the slope. So it's going to to do that at this site, uh, even it's a real conservative factor. Uh, his, his design is based just on that vertical element, but there is certainly a lateral move. The spread. Yeah. So okay. And it's based on half of the measured field rate for a level of safety. So we measured at 0.3 inches per hour, we designed at 0.15 inches per hour. So you, can, you know, to have a two times level of safety. Uh, so it's very conservative design. Okay. And the yeah. use of uh, the drainage class, yeah, poorly drain, very poorly drain, uh, basically has to with how deep down the water table is. Right. And so when you have a wetland down in the lower part, so the water table within a foot of the surface, so it's poorly drained. If you move up into the site, it's four feet or I can't remember the exact numbers, but mm -hmm. it's deeper down. So then you have a moderately well drained or moving towards a well drained. Like most of the site is moderately well drained, so it's four feet down or more. Um, so, and, and that's similar to that the neighbor is just off the southeastern corner of the property at 76 mm -hmm. Country Road. I had actually half the wetlands on her property and I found poorly drained soils, but it was just in the area of the wetland. Mm. And then in other parts of her property, just like this property, found moderately wet drained soil. So there's other water tables at different depths in different parts of the property. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Kenny has, I don't know if you had anything else, I think you can summarize the comments he had. Again, thank you. For attention to this application by the Fairfield oh. Housing Authority of Kansas City. In connection, in connection with this proposal, there are no adverse impacts to any wetlands or water courses either on or off site, both Mr. Kenny and Mr. Baker. We've heard from our team, your own experts. You had two of your own experts. Uh, legally, there is no need for a feasible alternative analysis absent any adverse effect the on site wetlands. We did the analysis in any event that you've heard. The court previously noted that the proposed buildings, which remain the same in this application as with our prior application, are the most feasible and prudent. That was litigated by the courts. And as to the wetlands, we originally submitted a different alternative design, which was presented back in October in our filing back in October. And uh, after you selected an expert, Mr. Ginter, and after he and Mr. Hurley 
reviewed it. We submitted a revised plan after our team met with uh, Mr. Ginger and the town to discuss this. And, and you, you have a luxury in this case of having two experts that you did retain in addition to the town engineer to assist you in this process uh, for review on your behalf. You had Dr. Clements, as you'll remember, confirm that the on-site wetland, small wetland, neither functions as a vernal pool, nor does it support wetland to obligate species. And Mr. Ginter, and we adopted his recommendation regarding the relocation of the detention area. And now you have his positive comments to our application. Uh, the bottom line and the question before this commission is whether this development will have any impact on the wetland, either on or off site or what courses. And there's no evidence of any such effect. Uh, there's no proposed activity within any inland wetlands and only minor work proposed on a 90 foot upland review area that applies to this particular parcel. And activities or impacts uh, in an upland review area are not in and of themselves, as you know, a reason to deny an application. There must be a likely adverse impact to a wetland or water course for nine applications. I think the evidence in this case is clear that uh, existing upland review area, uh, you heard from the experts, will be enhanced and will continue to moderate storm water runoff and to preserve the existing functions and values of the wetland on the property. Uh, there were comments by Mr. Trinket, our team has discussed them, but there's no substantial evidence of any impact presented by Mr. Trinket. Letters suggest there may be increased runoff, there may be more volume, there may be pollution loads. He's provided no analysis, no calculation, no numbers. And uh, your consultant, Mr. Kinter, did not adopt Mr. Trinkus's analysis. I just want to comment briefly on the, the his so-called uh, DEEP guidance documents. The appellate court, as I indicated previously, as Connecticut has ruled, the DEEP guidance does not constitute substantial evidence. And for instance, the 2002 guidelines for soil erosion and sediment control well, do not themselves have the force of law. And although they may contain a set of beneficial recommendations, non-adherence does not in itself imply a likelihood of adverse impacts on wetlands. That the Machows concludes is But if you look at that document, if you look at those guidelines themselves, the document references that it's a guidance document, but does not replace professional judgment. And it's exactly what Mr. Baker and Mr. Ginter and Mr. Penny have provided the professional judgment to those guidance documents. Finally, just to remind you, we're providing on about one third of the property a conservation easement in perpetuity forever. There's going to be that conservation easement. Uh, the testimony of our expert team, your team, the engineering department all supports approval of this application. And again, my client thanks you for your time your effort, your consideration, uh, because this is an important project for the Fairfield Housing Authority, for the Fairfield Housing Corporation, and for the town, and the thousands of people need this type of housing that are on lists waiting for it and are entitled to such assisted housing uh, under federal and state law. So again, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, I have a couple of questions before. Um, the, uh, this is, a, you know, it's a big project and we're not professionals and, you know, you are going to present to your professionals experts here to give us information. And I, I think we as a committee had voted on the, you know, the folks that we got um, to assist us. Um, now, um, I don't think there's a mechanism currently in the town um, for payment of those experts. Is that something that you or your client would consider? Um, because you know we're looking at our regulations to do that, but right now that's not there. And I, I know you do practice in other towns as well. Some other towns do have that. Um, and personally, I can understand the uh, vernal pool expert. That's not. That's more of something we really needed to do, and it didn't affect you. It was an answer. He gave us a report, fine. But um, the uh, the other report, Mr. Ginter, um, that helped you. That helped you now when you needed to go to the building department that may have been other things, I believe, right? So so these engineering reports came in. Would your client be willing to do 
to, to chip in, if you will, um, as a as a payment without we have no authority to do that. I think I would speak to them about that. I think they will consider that. OK. OK, I just wanted to bring it out there. I, you know where I stand or we stand as a committee at this point, but we are looking into that. So that'll be something that'll happen in the future. Um, you know, we're a new board, new people. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any other comments or questions? We're going to open up for, get, I'd like to get Mr. Gitter's opinion on the record. For oh, fun. sure. I'm sorry. I did not know that. Yes. Is he, is he? Second row on the left. Yep. I, I'm here. Yep. I, Excellent. I, I'm assuming you were listening in. Can you, uh, at one point, there was a, a comment um, regarding your report. Would you be able to comment there? Certainly. So for the record, David Ginter, professional engineer with Redness and Mead, um, as has been discussed uh, for the last half hour or so, uh, I have reviewed uh, the revised uh, documentation uh, provided uh, in the last handful of days. Um, uh, I have uh, provided my comments and, and as discussed uh, the comments I've made uh, are, are uh, minor in nature um, again as as has been mentioned construction document level details um, the big picture items that have been discussed for the last few months uh, in my uh, opinion have been addressed um, uh, to answer mr. Fain's question uh, do I believe that there's uh, any adverse impacts to the wetlands water courses or, or downstream facilities uh, it is my professional opinion, uh, no, uh, there will be no adverse impacts uh, to the on-site wetlands, uh, water courses, and downstream facilities. Uh, this plan, uh, I believe, uh, meets the intent of, of treatment and provides uh, enhanced uh, treatment for and protection for those wetlands uh, that are on site there. Um, I think uh, I appreciate the, the client or the applicant, excuse me, working uh, with us to uh, to make the changes uh, based on the recommendations that I've made throughout this process. Uh, I know it's not easy uh, to do that, uh, and, and they've made this process, I think, uh, go very well uh, throughout. So I, I do appreciate them on, on that front. But again, it is my professional opinion that there will be no adverse impacts uh, as a result of this uh, project. Thank you very much. Any questions there? I wonder if um, anyone uh, would like to comment on the Public Act 04209 about the jurisdiction of the commission. In what regard, Commissioner? That's where the uh, statutes were amended to accommodate consideration of wildlife. Okay, I, I think what we can. Um... I just was interested if. Any of them had an opinion on that? What was that statute number again? Public Act 04209. That would be amendment to 22A41C. Yeah, right. and, and we did address that in our December 23rd, 2002 correspondence. Well, I think it was just dismissed, not so much addressed. No, no we recognize that uh, the uh, the change that the, uh, we quoted specifically, the act does not protect non wetland species or authorize the denial of an application for a regulated, quote, in an area outside wetlands or water courses on the basis of an impact or effect on aquatic plant or animal life unless such activity will likely impact or affect the physical characteristics of such wetlands or water courses. So, so I know there's something circulated after the last hearing and that was the same thing that we cited in that letter for the same. I'm just talking layman because as I said, when I visit that spot, I see the same animals every time. And I'm just asking, I'm having a lot of difficulty because it's my opinion and you're not gonna shake me and no one on this commission is gonna shake me that the second the first bulldozer rolls, the animals that I see are done, they're gone. I'm just curious, doesn't that in and of itself affect the wetland? Commissioner, the absence of them. You, you can make your vote based on however you want to. Sure. Vote. Mm -hmm. What the council done here is basically stated the statute. So mm -hmm. In essence, he's answered your question, mm -hmm. and and that's really all he can do at this point. Okay. Um, but we can have that discussion in our discussion on on the vote, and you know, and let's see what plays out. But um, I think council has answered it based on the language of the statute. I just wanted to echo um, your previous comment regarding the 
um, use of the outside consultants and guiding this agency. It's always a double edged sword. However, I think in this instance, it was extremely helpful. And, yeah. you know, with all due respect to Council, I don't agree with their um, position that there was no feasible and prudent alternative because I think we've developed a feasible alternative. And by doing so, they've taken removed the doubt from my mind regarding this project and uh, came up, I think, with a much better project uh, overall for both for this agency and for the uh, for the applicant. Thank you, Commissioner. Any commissioners online? Kate, any anything there? You're good. She is OK. Anybody else? Any other comments, questions while they're here? No. All right. Mm -hmm. um, well, Anybody online um, with any new information or in response to what was said today? All right. Yes, I am online. I'd like to say something in response to everything I heard today. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Can you give me your name and uh, I guess it's an address? Yes, yeah, 76 Country Road, Altabelli, Elizabeth. Uh, Yes, it's it, this is absolutely unreal. We've just had storms. I've had water pooled in my entire the southeast corner that goes up to the meadow. There is consistent water issues. There are wildlife that go between the meadow, like your commissioner is saying. They are all over the place. There is extenuating, extensive wildlife here. There is so much that you will take away from this area. There will be 100 people living in a 40 unit assisted living, which is totally not the place. This is not a high density place. And, and you're gonna tell me, I've already said this and I have, but I'm appalled. I represent many neighbors in the community this is absolutely insane, absolutely insane. Yep. I will take it upon myself to personally sue every applicant on this. Uh, All right, this okay, we're not gonna have any threats them. of Ms. Saltabelli, can somebody, when you do with the threats, we're gonna, we're gonna, I heard you, thank you very much, but we're, we're not doing that. Um, You're not, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but when our backyards you, and our houses can you, can you are flooded, that yeah. it is a problem. Thank you. Uh, so the commission is here for anybody who's watching online, and I've said it before. We have an applicant come before us. They give us their position. Public then can come or, or anybody opposed to it can come and give us their reasoned uh, opposition to it. Um, but any threats to any members of the commission or to applicants will not be, um, uh, we're not gonna uh, condone that. We're not gonna listen to it. Um, we we have the information about animal life, about aquatic life, if there is. We have all this information. We have reports. We have all of these things. And now, based on what the rules say, if the commission decides to close the public hearing today, we will have 35 days to make our decision. So, Hi, this is Sassen Motel. I had a question. Um, I'm at 136 Borowski. I did speak before. I did have a question uh, for... Uh, David Ginter, um, I know it was hopefully just a Freudian slip, but you know, referring to the uh, applicant as the client. But has his firm done business with their engineering firm at all? I just I just want to make sure there's I'm no. Sorry, can can you can you repeat your name and address, please? Absolutely, it's Justin Botel. I'm at one three six Borowski in Fairfield. Okay. Now, do you have any information to provide us? I was just asking. I was just. Based on that statement, if 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 those firms had done business, if there's any Carol. conflict of interest with the two engineering firms, that's all. Since he called our client, if who's done, whether which witness and meet with the uh, David Ginter and his firm, EDM or. <clears throat> I don't think that's relevant. Uh, it's not relevant. So thank you, though. But uh, if you have any information to provide, that's fine. Otherwise, that that's not relevant. Okay. And this, I, uh, in the past, I did email the pictures of, uh, that our mail carrier taken of the bobcats and other species. I didn't get confirmation. Uh, actually, 
we we believe we've seen them and if if okay. it was emailed to us i think i've actually seen it and i think we have seen it because all the emails come to us and it's become part of the record right all right thanks Thank motion that we close the public hearing okay would anybody like a second that okay one more anybody else any comments before we do that um comments uh information to provide us either for or against Hi, my name is Jessica. Am I on? You are. Can you Hi, give us I your name at, and address? Uh, my name is Jessica Inman. I live at 41 Oakwood. I just had a question, um, and maybe this was addressed and I missed it. Um, will this impact the water table at all? Because it's already very high in this neighborhood. Since it rained like a week and a half ago, my sump pump has been going nonstop because water just keeps coming into my basement. Um, so I was just curious. I don't know if it's been addressed or not. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, that doesn't apply. So it, again, it, the, the information has to be provided by you. It, none of us here I have are going to be able to answer that because it's not part of what's required. So, um, there are reports. That were provided that talk about the two year, 10 year storm re requirements. Yeah. All, all of those things are in there. But as far as specifically dealing with a water table, that's not anything that's dealt with. So we wouldn't be able to answer that. Um, you know, as far as is there going to be flooding post development on downwind? I think that that is what those reports. Right. Therefore, yeah. and there's and the applicants reports are saying that that's been dealt with and it's actually. What less, I guess, at the 3 point something mark. Uh, so that's the reports are there, um, but the water table part we can't answer. Thank somebody you. in the audience that wants to speak. Yeah, okay. Uh, anybody here in the audience that uh, live in the room that would like to say anything either for or against. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, the same motion. Same motion. Again. Commissioner Payne makes a motion to close the public hearing. Anybody second that? I'll second it. Commissioner Boucher seconds that. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so the public hearing portion of this is closed. There will be no decision tonight. Thank you. Um, all right, and uh, let's move on to Roman 9 other. Schedule currently pending to reconvene subcommittee to review proposed in the what? Oh, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, well, we're going to work on it. I think we have got things to schedule. Tim and I have to work on the regulations on the fee schedule. And then also, I think in March, we're going to have that reschedule that uh, workshop. Okay, I, I, I want Someone to um, I want to ask any other commissioners. Um, who would right now it's it's Commissioner Fain, Commissioner Commissioner Amanda Martins Campbell, and it's him, I guess, and they work with him. Would one more commissioner want to assist them? Excellent. I am appointing to the subcommittee Mr. Commissioner Ted Lipsinger. I have no idea. <laughs> so big so mistake. He, he's there part you go. of it now, okay? Um, so that uh, well, one more southern area. Very good. All board on back. That. Thank you. Well, thank you. Anybody else with anything to discuss? Others? No. We're good. Then we, we are adjourned. Well done. <laughs>